Siamo in India, a Calcutta, e questa è Elina Banik, una artista indiana molto nota, un'artista contemporanea e eh, con un'attitudine eh, nella sua arte eh, nell'espressionismo. Vediamo qui in effetti eh, parte oh, del, suo, eh, del suo ambiente che le, come vedete rappresenta anche nelle sue opere. È una donna che eh, ha anche approfondito lo studio di filosofie orientali e si è lasciata ispirare eh, da molte filosofie, tra cui il taoismo. In questa sua forma eh, di espressionismo e anche a volte di ricerca della propria interiorità, è stata anche una donna ed è una donna di battaglie, di grandi eh, battaglie anche di indipendenza. Una donna veramente fiera di se stessa. Oggi vorremmo proprio raccontare questa storia di una donna in, nel suo ambiente, quindi nella sua India, nella sua Calcutta e anche di tutto quello che lei ha fatto per ottenere con forza e con fierezza la sua, in, la sua indipendenza. It was uh, sort of my decision. Um, I think uh, our life is not our Society interferes a lot in India, uh, but I feel it's my body, it's my life and I should have the right when to give birth to a child, when not to give birth to a child. Marriage should not be a passport to give birth to a child. If uh, uh, sort of I was not married, so I didn't have the um, uh, right to give birth to a child or I was married and I got the right, uh, I got the right to give birth to a child, but that should not be the parameter. Um, the uh, society should not decide. Uh, I should decide when to give birth to my child. So I was married, but I didn't feel like giving birth to a child or carrying a child at that time. But when I was, again, I was not married. I went for a divorce and, but, I started growing my motherly instinct very strong within myself. So I wanted to have the child um, and that was really, really very strong motherly instinct and I wanted to give birth, I did. Um, I had to fight with the society, I had to fight with the destiny, but I did. And uh, of course, I'm grateful to my destiny. Uh, my child is a gift of uh, my destiny. Uh, again, for my creations, I was inspired from the iconic characters uh, of Indian mythology, uh, Durga, Kali, and lots of uh, tribal and folk art forms of the world, um, the African sculptures, African wooden sculptures and uh, potteries, the Chinese brass vessels, the art of Mexico, of the uh, Maya and Aztec uh, uh, civilization. Different uh, art forms of the whole world. I traveled half of the world. I have seen many museums. And the folk and tribal art inspires me a lot, as well as sometimes a lot of contemporary artists inspires me, me a lot. And the paintings of Rabindranath Tagore definitely inspires me the most. His uh, portraits of uh, women, his feminine characters. You can read the female psychology in a very strong way in Rabindranath Tagore's paintings. And that protests, they protest, they all are protesters. So uh, the paintings of Rabindranath Tagore, the portraits of uh, his females, uh, definitely the portraits of the uh, uh, women that he painted, that inspired me more than anything in the whole world. So this is the background, the inspiration behind me. And uh, uh, I would say 200 years ago in India, there was uh, something called Satidaho, the women, uh, married women, after they, the, their husbands uh, would die, 
mostly younger young women used to get married to very very old men and uh, after the death of their husband they were cremated in the same uh, fire um, with their husband and that was called satidaho that was a ritual and actually that was to grab the property of the woman uh, by the in-laws and by the elders of the family uh, it was a politics on women it was a very dirty politics of the women and women uh, were burnt uh, uh, it was uh, sort of they were cremated with their husband it was only 200 years ago and then it stopped uh, Raja Ram Mohan Roy um, and some other intellectuals uh, that time of course the British people helped him um, to make it as a law to stop this uh, satidaham or uh, cremating the woman with the dead husband and it stopped and after that women started getting educated Ishwar Chandra Vidya Shagor he started uh, women education um, in India and women started learning, going to school, going to college, getting their degrees. The first woman doctor came, Kadumbini Yanguli, we read about her in history and so on it went on. The uh, women were graduated, Kadumbini Yanguli and Chandramukhi Basu, they were graduated together. Uh, and they were the first two female graduates in Bengal and at the same time um, uh, uh, Anandi Bai Joshi was a female doctor and uh, probably a few months ago she passed uh, her medical exams before Kadumbini Ganguly or almost at the same time but uh, Anandi Bai Joshi uh, um, didn't survive long uh, but Kadumbini Ganguly could continue her medical practice but she also had to face a lot of difficulties and that's how it started. And now I decided to have a child without a wedlock and this is out of choice, not out of compulsion. In USA, in America, in the black community, single motherhood is very common. In Europe it is common because in Europe people hardly get married these days. Uh, for the last uh, 20 to 30 years or maybe more, people were living in together and women were giving birth to child and kids were taking birth out of wedlock. It is common there. But uh, in India it is not that common. I'm the first unwed uh, single mother uh, through IVF in Eastern India and which is not an accident. Accidents were there before. Um, and that used to happen in the red light areas, uh, women were tortured, they were not married uh, or they were working as the kept in the, the uh, heroines of the Indian theatres. There are legendary actresses but um, they were uh, that time they used to uh, suppose like uh, 100, 150 years ago or 200 years ago. Um, when the actress started acting in Indian theatres in Bengal, mostly they were uh, coming from the red light areas. And it was, the, in their society, there were single mothers. Even now in red light areas, there are single mothers. But that's sort of uh, compulsion or accident because uh, they're in the red light area, women work hard as sex workers and uh, they don't have any choice. Sometimes they're uh, forced, they're raped and they uh, sometimes uh, they become pregnant from these and uh, either they cannot go for an abortion or they wish to keep that child and they give birth and they become single mother but that is different. In my case, I wanted to be a single mother. I wanted, I wished, and um, it's deliberately I wanted, not through by not by any torture, not by any force, or not uh, I was not raped, but I wanted, and this is what uh, from satidaho to single motherhood, 
after Raja Ramon Rai and Vita Sagar, uh, like women started getting educated, uh, the uh, Satida was stopped, women were not being burnt with their dead husband and they continued their life. That time Vida Sagar started uh, the remarriage of the widows which was called Vidava Vivaha and uh, women uh, who used to uh, uh, become widows, uh, their husbands used to die, they started getting married again and uh, entering into um, normal life uh, no, uh, like uh, like any other woman because in India there were a lot of restrictions, they were forced to wear white clothes, they were forced to eat vegetarian food and a lot of restrictions in the society but those are gone long back. Um, now these days there are no, no, no such restrictions and I wanted to uh, break this wall of marriage, this door of marriage, the iron door of marriage. Woman can get married, woman can live in together with a man she wishes to or woman can live with another woman if they are transgender or lesbians. But if they wish to have child, they should have that right, we have that right and we should do it if we want and that should not be connected with the marriage and that is sort of opening the door to many women who uh, may not, I mean probably they are not married or uh, dowry is also another problem in India although dowry is illegal but still in the remote society in the villages or also uh, in the uh, urban society also it is happening somewhere in the lower middle class families in the slums or sometimes in the affluent families also this dowry system is there not much in the bengali society but in the non-bengali society it is still there but some women don't get married they cannot get married for this dowry system also and there are various reasons so whether a woman is married or not it's her life it's her body if she wishes to have a child she should and i sort of opened this door to many women i opened the door for myself and i opened the door for many women <laughs> stesso quando nessun altro lo fa.